Hello again, St. John's family and friends. This is Pastor Brady, and this is Sunday, October 25th, 2020. And this is our online Sunday school time together. I remind uh, the church family and friends that we do have in-person Sunday school and they meet in the gathering room um, in the center of the church and they can social distance in that room and they meet at uh, 9 a.m. for a time of opening and sharing and then class begins around 9.15 a.m. and all are welcome. Uh, and then online Sunday school is also being offered during this time of the pandemic. And our online Sunday school, which you're watching right now, we are studying the book of Psalms. And anyone is welcome also to come to this class. We gather downstairs in the fellowship hall. And I remind those that are watching to join us for our worship time at 1030 a.m. Uh, in person or online and it streams uh, live on Facebook every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. There's other services and devotions that are posted throughout the week, and if you'd like to connect to the church email, just um, be put on that link, uh, call into the office throughout the week, and, and the secretary will get you on that link. But you can always access our Facebook page or our YouTube page, and that way you can watch the videos and join in at any time. Well, we've been studying in this class for the last... Uh, about a month and a half as we began the Sunday school year, the book of Psalms. We've been talking um, about what the Psalms are, what they mean to us, uh, what they meant when they were written, um, you know, often put to music, even to today. We've reflected on a few Psalms that we recognize in some of our praise songs and hymns. Uh, we recognize, or we've, we've talked about the Psalms that we're more familiar with um, and, and others which are more obscure. And as we go through this time together, this time of study, um, and as we explore the Psalms, uh, we're looking right now in what is called the first book of the Psalms, the first 41 Psalms, and that's where we're working right now. And then we'll move on um, in a few weeks uh, to the next um, collection of Psalms. But the Psalms were written so that we would remember them and that we should would also apply them to our lives, not just to be put to music, not just to be put to, to poetry, um, in a sense, but that we would apply them. And they teach us about a relationship with God. They, they give praise to God, um, and they, they help us in our times of trouble, and also in our times of joy and celebration. And last week we read probably the psalm that most people know, uh, more than any other, the 23rd Psalm. And, it, and it's a psalm that brings comfort. It's all about being shepherded by our God that loves us, and it points to Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd teaches us that we can get through anything if God is at our side, and if we allow him to work in our lives. Well, this week we're going to study the 26th Psalm, and I'm sure it's, it's um, a lot less known to most of you, but the 26th Psalm is all about our loyalty and connection to God. And, and I remind you, to, it's great if you have a good study Bible to follow along um, during this time. And, and anytime you read scripture, it's good to have a good study Bible so you can look back and, and um, you can see the context, you can see the authorship, um, you can see the audience, who the psalm was written towards. And I remind you that we think of most of the psalms as written by King David, but there were other authors and some were anonymous. Today is another psalm that was written by or attributed to King David. And we believe that it was written, this psalm was written during a time of rebellion. Um, and, it's, and it's all about commitment to God. It's about loyalty to God. And if you are committed to God, if you have God in your life, you are able to face down troubles. You are, to stand, you are able to stand up to those um, that may question you and your intentions. If you truly have God in your life, if you truly allow him into your soul. Um, if you let the spirit reign in your life. And, you know, it, it, right now, the world is, is very divisive. Um, things are a struggle. We have the political situation and climate, of course, which only makes that worse. But even on just the scale of, of neighbors, so often uh, in communities, uh, we fight over things that really don't matter, small things, uh, opinions. Um, and often our faith gets pushed back into the corner. Um, do we stand up to, our, to other people with our faith? Do we stand up in love? Um, do we work together? Do we show them what our God is all about through how we treat them and how we work through division and differences and come together? 
you know, if you're committed to God, if you are loyal to him, he's going to uphold you and he's going to help you get through. And he's going to teach you and lead you in ways of love and grace and have hope for the future. And he's going to help you in your relationships, even, you know, your neighbors, your family in a small community, not, not the broader scene of, of the nation, but here at home. How can we learn to love each other, work together more and still stand up for who we are and what we believe in? And the most and truly the only important thing that you believe in Jesus Christ and his grace and that you want his love in your life. So let's join together now in our scripture, in our psalm for today, the 26th song of King David. Um, so I invite you to pull out your Bible now and we will read together. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have led a blameless life. I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind, for your love is ever before me, and I walk continually in your truth. I do not sit with deceitful men, nor do I consort with the hypocrites. I abhor the assembly of evildoers and refuse to sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence, and I go about your altar, O Lord, proclaiming aloud your praise and telling of all your wonderful deeds. I love the house where you live, O Lord, the place where your glory dwells. Do not take away my soul along with sinners, my life with bloodthirsty men, in whose hands are wicked schemes, whose right hands are full of bribes. But I lead a blameless life. Redeem me and be merciful unto me. My feet stand on level ground. In the great assembly, I will praise the Lord. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word on this day. I don't know about you, but even as I read the words of the 26th Psalm, this person is confident in their faith. They are confident in what they are doing. They are confident in the paths of righteousness they're walking in. As I read this, you know, I don't know that any of us can say these things truthfully because we love the Lord and we may be committed to the Lord, but when we look at, at this list here, we know at times we fall away to the ways of the world. At, at times we're subdued, um, at times we're tricked by the evil one, you know, because we're not blameless. We do have sin, but this is what we strive to be. You know, we strive to be blameless. We strive to be righteous. We strive to be totally committed to God, even though we know right now that we're still sinners. We're on that pathway to perfection that, that Jesus is taking us on and that we're guided on in the Holy Spirit. Now, if you're not a believer this, and you're watching this, this may not make so much sense to you. So I invite you to, to study the scripture again and again, but it's all about commitment to God. God knows that we're all imperfect. Um, you know, we're all sinful, whether we're believers or non-believers. We're still filled with sin. But you realize the blood and broken body of Jesus takes away the sin and will make us blameless. One day, we'll be perfected. We'll be in heaven with God. And even though we live in a broken world, even though there's a lot of division, and I was saying, you know, earlier, even between neighbors, between friends, between families, there are problems and stresses. There are arguments and there are differences. And we need to work together to bring more unity and more love. We still struggle with those things, but one day all will be perfected. And even though we may feel that we are being pulled down by the evil of the world, we can stand up to it. We can be like these words that David says. We can say, I want to be with you, Lord. I will stand against the ways of the world. I will not sit with the evildoers. You know, that doesn't mean we don't reach out to other sinful people. Of course, we, we share God's love with them. But it means we don't want to be molded in that way. We don't want to fall to the evil of the world. Instead, we want to turn to God. Even though we will sin, God makes us blameless through the blood and broken body of Jesus Christ. And this psalm teaches us that the Lord can vindicate and will vindicate us. You know, it says, it begins right off the first verse. Vindicate me, O Lord. For I have led a blameless life. I don't know, but I don't feel like I've led a blameless life. And I don't think anyone watching probably feels that way. But I do know this, that through Jesus Christ, that sin, that scourge of sin is taken away. 
the blemishes are taken away. We're made white as snow. We're cleansed by his grace and his love. It's something so amazing we can't understand. But that's, that's the great love of our God. Well, let's look at the verses here. I read that first verse. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have led a blameless life. I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. I don't know that any of us can say that either. We've all wavered. No matter how faithful you are, you're going to waver. And for the non-believer, you know, you don't fully understand that yet. But you too, even if you don't believe in God or Christ, I'm sure you waver between what you believe is good and how you're sucked into the ways of the world um, and how you feel about that. He goes on to say, Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind, for your love is ever before me, and I walk continually in your truth. Imagine that if we felt confident enough that we could say, God, test me now. Look at my heart, look at my mind. I think sometimes we say, whoa, let's hide from God. Let's, let's, let's go back into the shadows because we don't want the light upon us because we know the wrongdoings we have. We know the evil thoughts that sometimes seep into our minds. Um, imagine if we had that confidence. Knowing we're still sinners, but knowing we love God and are committed to him, knowing that we will fail, but knowing that he still upholds us and can revive us. If we have that kind of confidence, we can do a better job standing up to sin and standing up to evil. And then we can say, you know, look at me, because I walk in your truth. And if we believe in Jesus Christ, we're walking in his truth. If we truly affirm that, even though, yes, once again, we are sinners, we're walking towards and in his truth if we commit our lives to him. I do not sit with deceitful men, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I abhor the assembly of evildoers. I refuse to sit with the wicked. I'm sure we've all been in that situation where we've judged someone else to be a bigger sinner than us. Or maybe the world has judged that collection of sinners to be you know, worse than another group because of the crimes they've committed or how society looks upon them. But really... The group of evildoers that we don't want to sit among, the wicked that we don't want to be in the court of, is the ways of the world, the ways of greed, um, the ways of you know seeking out popularity and power, the ways of assembling things of this world that are fleeting, the ways of turning against God and His mercy. You know, those are the things we do not want to sit with. Not necessarily a, just a group of people. And it's not good to surround yourself with people who are, that are doing bad things. You know, you can shower love upon them, but, you know, if you stay with a group of people that are doing those bad things, eventually that starts to fall upon you, and you start doing them as well. So there is some truth to that. You don't want to be in a group of evildoers. If you're walking with the Lord, you need to walk away from that group. Still pray for them and shower that love upon them. But you need to find yourself in a place of safety and refuge, which can only be found in our God. So... You know, it, it is that those groups of people, but it's also the ways of the world, you know? We need to be training and teaching our minds towards heavenly things, not earthly things. We need to be looking at the prize, which is God, the treasure which is in heaven, the treasure which is his love and his grace upon us. He goes on to say, I wash my hands in innocence and go about your altar, O Lord. Wow, that, that line sounds bold. I wash my hands in innocence. And you know what? On our own, we cannot wash our hands in innocence. We are not innocent. All of us have put Jesus Christ upon the cross. God loved us so much. He said, you are forgiven, my child. I have mercy upon you, my people. And yes, you know, we can walk about his altar innocent. If we are seeking him out in forgiveness, if we are repentant hearts, and if we believe in Jesus Christ, we shouldn't become we shouldn't come to church, you know, and feel that we aren't good enough. We shouldn't gather with friends for a Bible study and feel we aren't good enough. We should be there to learn and to feel and to experience God's grace. And we should be asking God for forgiveness day by day and have repentant hearts. But we also need to know that we are forgiven. We are made blameless. We are made innocent what God has done. We are forgiven. I wash my hands of your innocence and go about your altar, O Lord, proclaiming loud your praise. And this is the other part. You know, how often are we doing that? Proclaiming loud his praise and telling of all his wonderful deeds. Are we doing that in our lives? Because that shows a level of commitment. 
if we are actually, you know, not just going to church, you know, not just taking it upon ourselves to study the Bible or to grow in faith, but to take that message forward. That doesn't mean the bullhorn on the corner uptown yelling something out. No, that means showing the love. That means inviting someone to a church function. That means reaching out in a card um, or a message uh, that, you know, just says, I, I care about you. I'm thinking of you. Uh, you know, God loves you. Those kind of things. Those, those are telling of his wonderful deeds through your actions, through the gifts of the Spirit that you have been given. I love the house where you live, O Lord, the place where your glory dwells. Well, that's not just the church. Some people might look at it and say, well, yeah, I, I like coming to church, but it's, it's, isn't it just a building, Pastor? It is just a building. Or two or more are gathered. His presence is there. His presence is in your heart. So when you gather in church, his presence is there. We should be celebrating loudly. We should be loving that, that feeling of being together in God's grace, being made blameless together. But it's not just in the church. It's, it should be in your homes. It should be in your workplaces. It should be everywhere the faithful go. Because God is ever-present. He is always with us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And don't let people, you know, don't let those people that sit in that category of evildoers or the ways of the world... Don't let them tell you about your faith. Don't let them block you out from experiencing your faith wherever you may be. Don't let the world drag you down, but yet stand up to it with the power of God behind you. Do not take away my soul along with sinners, my life with bloodthirsty men, in whose hands are wicked schemes, whose right hands are full of bribes. You know, here is a plea. Don't take us away with the sinners. We see what they do. Well, we're sinners too, but we know that God has grace for us. There are some that will not turn to God. Some will let, remain in that sin. Some will think the ways of the world will get them out, and it's what they need. Yes, we got to shower love upon them and pray that their hearts turn, but we also pray to God and know that he's going to rescue us. We need to have that certainty. That, that he's taking us out of that, out of that and breaking the chains of sin, and that he loves us, and we're going to grow with him. We need, we need to affirm that. We need to know that. You know, we're not going to be taken down with the bloodthirsty. We are not going to fall to the wicked schemes if God is on our side, if we're following him. I lead a blameless life. Redeem me and be merciful to me. Again, he's affirming, you know, I lead a blameless life. I don't feel that way. I'm sure you don't. I, I think we can all, if we reflect even on the sins we'll commit in the next hour, if we think about the sins we commit in our mind and the actions that we take, you know, I think we know we're sinners. And it's hard to say, well, I'm blameless. But again, you are made blameless through the blood and broken body of Jesus Christ. And you need to start living like that. That doesn't mean you don't ask for forgiveness. That doesn't mean you're not repentant. That doesn't mean you, need to, you don't need to grow in God's love. But you need to realize you're set free from sin by Jesus Christ. And we all need to live like that a little more, that we have a blameless life because of him, and that we know we're going to be redeemed because of Jesus, and we know and are certain of God's mercy. My feet stand on level ground. In the great assembly, I will praise the Lord. Maybe you feel like you're on shaky ground. I know I do sometimes. The ways of the world, the things that drag us in so many directions, all the division and uncertainty right now, Things seem shaky. There is only one that is the stable ground. Only one that is the solid rock. The only one, only one you can keep and need to keep your feet planted in. And that's our God. That is Jesus Christ. And that is living with the Holy Spirit in your life. Seeking God out in his holy work. If you're doing that, you're going to be shaken. If you do that, you're going to at times feel that sin is overcoming you you do that, you're still going to walk away and sometimes sit with those evildoers and, and even be a part of that. But you also are on a pathway of truth if you truly affirm who Jesus Christ is, if you truly believe in God. And you can come to his assembly, to a place of worship, you can praise him in your home, you can praise him with friends, you can praise God and display God's glory through the actions of your life each day. So we should recommit our lives to do what David is saying here in the 26th Psalm. To stand up to the ways of the world with the power of God behind us. 
to be committed and loyal to the ways of the Lord. And a lot of that takes, you know, immersing yourself in the word and surrounding yourself with faithful people. I know the pandemic has made that hard, but even watching something online, you're doing that. We're all still connected by the Holy Spirit. For those that are uncertain, for those that don't believe yet, study the word. Surround yourself with people that you know are faithful Christians, faithful believers. I guarantee you will see something from the true ones, from the ones that are truly committed to God, from the ones that are truly loyal. And your life will be changed as well. I hope you join us for worship at 1030 uh, a.m. online, or you can come in person. And also this evening, we're having our fall fest here at the church. It's, it's cold and kind of rainy this morning. Hopefully the rain ends um, this afternoon from 4 to 6 in the backyard of the church. And also, um, you'll be able to come inside and eat if it's too cold um, in, the, in the fellowship hall. Um, but it's a, it's a great time um, of fellowship together. Um, wear a costume if you'd like to be part of the costume contest. There'll be hay rides and homemade food. Um, and we'll be able to social distance either outside or in the large rooms inside. But, you know, these are the kinds of things we need to do. Even, even gathering in fellowship to share God's love with one another. That shows our commitment. That shows our loyalty. And it, we need to feel that loyalty and commitment in our hearts as we move forward. So stand up to the ways of the world. Know that God loves you. Feel that grace move in your heart. And you'll be able to tell everyone what it means to be a believer. So I hope you all have a wonderful day. May God bless you. Amen.